Hello everybody. Today I'm going to discuss uh, one of my patients who recently visited our clinic uh, with a history of chronic uh, low back pain and pain was also radiating to one of her extremities. She carried her MRI along with her. Uh, what we found in the MRI was uh, quite interesting. So I thought uh, I will discuss the MRI uh, with you first and then I will try to clinically correlate whether her symptoms are correlating with her uh, MRI findings. So let me share my screen now. She is a 50-year-old active lady. She has been having uh, this pain for the past uh, couple of years. Uh, what you see is the T2-weighted sagittal image. Uh, let me move the cursor from uh, right to left. Uh, you are seeing the muscles initially, and then you'll be seeing the bones and the intervertebral disc level. And uh, this is somewhat... Uh, okay, and this is the mid-sagittal section, and that's where you see the spinal cord uh, through its entirety. And uh, you are seeing the vertebral bones. Uh, between that, you have the disc here. And what you see is the voluminous cerebrospinal fluid level over here. Uh, as I scroll down, you could see a slight enlargement of the cyst-like appearance over the uh, lower sacral region. As I go further, uh, you could see a well-defined uh, cyst formation at the lower sacral level, uh, which is uh, from right to left. Uh, at the same time, you could also appreciate the slight disc degeneration uh, at the L5 and S1 level with a little bit of moody changes in the lower aspect of the uh, lumbar spine, which is the L5 vertebra. Other discs are reasonably okay, though there's a slight degeneration over here and here. Uh, this is okay for her uh, age. Uh, the curve is maintained to some extent, though there is a slight uh, straightening of the uh, lordotic curve in the upper lumbar spine. I have zoomed the lower lumbar spine uh, for our uh, meticulous understanding. Uh, this is the end plate, which is undisturbed, but if you see the end plate over the fifth lumbar vertebra, the inferior aspect of the end plate is uh, microfractured, or otherwise called as the end plate uh, fracture or end plate uh, disturbances. Uh, you could also see a whitish appearance over here. We call that as high intensity zone. Uh, it is also called as moody changes, uh, which is uh, one of the reasons for the pain in the back. Okay? Uh, and then you can appreciate there is a slight... Uh, degeneration and uh, disruption of the disc material over here. Uh, so this is what we see in the sagittal view. Uh, the other discs are reasonably okay, though there's a slight degeneration in the L4, L5 level and a little bit fissuring happening in the L3, L4 level. Given our age, this is acceptable as our norm. Now let me go to the coronal view. Uh, as you see here, you are seeing the uh, patient from the front. Uh, you are seeing the vertebral bodies and then the interposed disc here. You are seeing the kidney here and then you are uh, seeing the spinal canal over here. Uh, and as I move the level further towards the sacrum, uh, you could uh, see the cyst happening over here and here and here. So now we know that the cyst is not only one. There are multiple cysts. So one, two, three, four. Uh, four cysts are uh, well defined in the uh, sacral level. So this is the sacrum bone, isn't it? This is the SI joint. Okay, so we are seeing the sacral level um, uh, cyst, uh, which is well defined and it's bright white. Uh, in the you know in T2, uh, water will appear white. So what is uh, water in the spine? It is the cerebrospinal fluid. So we need to presume that this cyst is from the cerebrospinal fluid accumulation. Okay, now we will compare the same with the Francis view or otherwise called as the axial view. This is a titubated uh, imaging of the axial view. We are moving from top to bottom. Uh, these are the kidneys. Uh, this is the lumbar vertebral body. Uh, here is the descending abdominal iota. And uh, what you see is the canal. And then the nerves here, the dot dot things, what you see is, is the nerve. And here is the face joint. And this is the spinous process. These are all the uh, lumbar extensors or muscles. All right. So this is the top level. And as you go down, 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 we are moving towards the lower lumbar spine. And now we are going to the L5-S1 level. In this level, you could see a broad-based uh, disc bulge. Uh, don't think the disc will bulge only posteriorly. It can bulge uh, postlaterally or even laterally. So this is an example of uh, you know, uh, lateral disc bulge. Actually, the patient is having both the sides, uh, the lateral bulge. Uh, this is the left side in the MRI. This is the right side. Uh, which is uh, this is an exiting nerve root and uh, here is the exiting nerve root. So the exiting nerve root uh, is in close proximity to the bulging disc over here. So uh, is this the reason for the pain? No, we need to clinically correlate. Uh, let me come to that later. Let me finish the, 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 the cyst component here. Let me go to the sacral level now. 
So you could see now we this is the fifth lumbar vertebra and then we go further. The first sacral bone starts. Already you started to see the cyst over here. One cyst over here, one cyst over here, one cyst. So the cysts are multiple in nature. Um, these two are the left side cyst and this one is the right side cyst. And as you go further, so there are multiple cysts that we know. It is happening on both right and left, we, we know. And it's happening in the lower sacral region, we know. Let me also compare the sagittal and the axial view together. Now, uh, what you see uh, in the right is the sagittal T2 weighted uh, uh, image. And what you see on the left is the T2 weighted axial image. Uh, let me move from top to bottom. Now, this is a, this is a top. Uh, you are somewhere in this level. Uh, let me understand, make you understand the orientation. Now, uh, this line corresponds to L4, L5, uh, which is represented over the image in the left. Now, as you go down and go, as you go down and down, so the disc is okay here. Mild degeneration is there, but the canal uh, stenosis is not really happening here. The, the exiting nerves are really happy. Uh, there is no major compression of the nerves. As you go down, 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 at the L5, S1 level, you could see uh, a broader disc uh, bulge, both the sides, and uh, there is a narrow, and there's a canal narrowing, both the sides, and uh, uh, there's a disc degeneration, which you could appreciate in the both the views. Okay? And uh, as I said, there's more changes and uh, end plate uh, fissuring happening here. Now, as you go further, uh, now you really start to see the cyst, uh, one in two in the left and one in the right and you go down and down and you go down and down you could see one more big cyst over here so now we know that uh, the patient has got two problem one is the l5 s1 disc uh, degeneration uh, with slight uh, bulge both the sides and little bit of modic changes and and end plate uh, changes uh, additionally the patient is having uh, four to five cyst in the sacral region now we need to understand what is this. We need to understand what this cyst is called as. Okay. So this cyst is called as tarlose cyst. It's otherwise called as perineural cyst. This cyst is formed within the nerve root sheath at the dorsal root ganglia level. You see here, this is the dorsal root ganglia. This is the posterior root. Uh, here is the posterior horn cells. Here is the anterior horn cells. And then the, the nerve which is coming out from the anterior horn cell is the anterior root. And then they both join together and form a mixed nerve here. At this level, you could see a small cyst here. This cyst is filled with cerebrospinal fluid, which is an extension of the CSF from the spinal canal itself. Isador Tarlow, in the year 1938, had identified this condition. He was exploring the phylum terminal of the cadavers and he accidentally identified this condition. Eventually, uh, so many papers were published under the same topic uh, later on. And now, Tarlow cyst is one of the established cause of non-mechanical low back pain. Uh, it is not very common. The prevalence rate is only about uh, 3 to 4 percentage. Uh, and uh, for unknown reasons, uh, females are more affected than the males. Uh, even though it is there, 80% of the Tarlow cysts are quite asymptomatic. Uh, unless until uh, these people are doing an MRI scan, most of the people will not even realize that they have the cyst. There are other forms of cyst. Uh, we call that as meningeal diverticulum. You could see on the right here, um, extra dural meningeal cyst, uh, other forms of cyst that can form around the nerves. Uh, but what we are discussing today is the Tarlow cyst, which is only the perineural cyst here. Here is a normal nerve root with a normal nerve sheet. The nerve sheet has three layers, epineurium, perineurium, and endoneurium. In Tarlow cyst, the cyst will be formed between the perineurium and the endoneurium. Okay, and that's why it's called as perineurial cyst. Okay, you see the MRI, the coronal view, and the sagittal view. In both views, you can really appreciate a well-defined cyst in the sacral region. Down below, you could see a real Tarlow cyst uh, for a patient who was undergoing a surgical drainage of the cyst. So the surgeon will do a surgical exploration and then he will be draining it. That is what is shown in the picture here. Uh, the causes of the cyst are quite uh, contentious. Nobody knows why it is. That's why it's idiopathic. Some people hypothesize that it can be because of the previous trauma or because of some inflammatory conditions. There was a study that they did in 500 patients who have low back pain. In that, 5% of these 500 people were having Tarlow cyst. In that 5%, only 1% of them had symptoms coming from the Tarlow cyst. So the Tarlow cyst are usually located, as you see in the picture, usually located in the sacral region. Oftentimes, as a physio, uh, we do get uh, patients with a mechanical low back pain. Uh, it's very rare to have patients uh, coming uh, with the complaints of Tarlow cyst. But we need to know uh, 
uh, what will be the clinical features if the pain had to come from the tarlocyst? It's very important to discern whether the pain is coming from the tarlocyst or the pain is a normal mechanical pain with the coincidental or incidental tarlocyst in the MRI because you have to make a clinical decision based on the clinical signs and symptoms and then you can choose to treat the patient if they have mechanical back pain uh, or you can refer the patient to a, a surgeon uh, in case if the tarlocyst is the reason for the pain so that the surgeon can do a surgical treatment. Here are the list of symptoms that can say that the pain is coming from the tarlocyst. Uh, because the cyst will be formed in a gradual manner, the onset also will be a gradual onset. So no patients can come and say that since yesterday I have been having the pain. They should usually they should be having the pain for, for so many years. These people uh, will be having more pain when they are sitting uh, for a long time and while standing for a long time. During static positions, the CSR pressure will get built up more and that will be causing them the pain. In fact, some patients will feel as if they are sitting on a rock and then they have to immediately get up. Uh, the only relieving portion for them is lying down portion because the CSR pressure will be low in the lying down portion. So these people will have a radicular type of symptoms like a lower limb pain, uh, weakness and paresthesia and so on. Since this cyst is involving only the lower sacral level, most people will have perineal symptoms like vaginal, rectal, pelvic floor type of pain. And uh, even some people will have uh, pain during sexual intercourse and uh, genitopelvic dysthesia. So if these symptoms are matching uh, with the MRI, then you can confirm that the pain is coming from the tarlocyst. But before that, make sure that you rule out all other causes of back pain. Once you clinically confirm, once you clinically confirm that the pain is coming from the tarlocyst, you can refer the patient to the surgeon. The surgeon will do a epidural block. Okay, he will be doing specifically doing a, a cardinal epidural anesthetic block. Uh, and uh, with that block, if the patient has significant pain relief, like uh, 70 to 80 percent of the pain relief uh, uh, after the injection, then it is a double confirmation that the pain is uh, really coming from the tarlocyst, and that way that can let the patient and the surgeon to decide the next course of action. Because most of our patients will be coming to us with a mechanical back pain or discogenic back pain, we must be aware what are the characteristics of the discogenic back pain so that this is presenting for our patient, then we, we can conveniently rule out the tarlosis. So the characteristics of the discogenic pain are early morning stiffness because the disc will be bigger in the morning to cause more stiffness in the morning. And then some people may have acute kyphotic or a lateral shift deformity. And uh, typically these people will be having a uh, pain during prolonged sitting. And then once they start to walk, they get better. Whereas in tarlocyst, even when they walk, they don't get better. Uh, the pain is variable in nature, which is a hallmark of you know, discogenic pain because some days they'll be having no pain. Some days they'll be having severe pain. It's all activity dependent and, and physicality dependent. Whereas in tarlocyst, since the cyst is consistently there, the pain will be consistent in nature. Some patients know after the treatment, uh, about one week to 10 days, they'll be significantly better with the exercise. And some of them will have lasting uh, pain relief after the exercise. Whereas in tarlocyst, there is no real identifiable exercise which can really relieve their pain uh, for a period of time. So that's why the tarlocyst is coming under the non-mechanical type of pain category. Additionally, with all above mentioned clinical signs, if the MRI also confirms that the disc is bulging and touching the exiting now, then we can double confirm that the pain is coming from the uh, mechanical source. Even uh, uh, in this case, treat the discogenic mechanical pain. So you don't worry about the tarlocyst, even if you have that in the MRI. Coming back to our patient, uh, our patient was having pain for the past five years, but the pain was episodic in nature. So she was having some good days, she was having some bad days, and she was having early morning stiffness, and, and the pain was variable in pattern exhibition. Uh, the exercise what we gave had really improved her significantly. And you see the pain locality. It is a, a low back pain, and then the pain is radiating to one side, uh, which is uh, more like a sciatica type of symptom. Though in the MRI, uh, there was a bulge on both the sides. Uh, somehow, clinically, she was having only one-sided pain. Somehow, uh, some nerves will get escaped. Uh, they won't get sandwiched, uh, so they don't get the pain. So our patient, clinically, she's having a discogenic uh, back pain. At the same time, the MRI also is confirming that the disc is bulging and touching the exiting L5 nerve, which we saw in the patient's MRI earlier. So if the pain is coming from the tarlocyst, the patient should undergo a treatment for that. Uh, the CS of needle aspiration will be done, but it's not very famous technique because uh, even though if you do aspiration, the cyst will be forming again. So surgery is one of the uh, good way of addressing this. So the surgeon will be draining the cyst and then he will be putting some fibrin glue and then he will suture it so that the cyst does not form again. So usually patients will be doing very well after the surgery and sometimes the patient may have some infection after the surgery and some patients, they will have the cyst reformed again. So, 
the intent of this particular video is to make the physios aware that there is a condition called tarlosis that exists. So that is coming under the non-mechanical form of back pain, uh, which can actually mimic like a sciatica pain. So physios must be able to differentiate the clinical and the radiological differences between the regular uh, discogenic back pain from the tarlosis. So we discussed the tarlosis clinical presentation and we discussed the discogenic pain clinical presentation. So you need to uh, clinically evaluate your patient and then you can make a decision of whether to treat the patient uh, if they come under the mechanical category or refer the patient if they come under the category of tarlosis category. And you must have some understanding of how to uh, interpret the MRI so that uh, that will add a few more value in your uh, overall diagnostic process. And be aware that asymptomatic incidental cyst must be ignored and treat the patient for discogenic pain if they come under the mechanical pain category. And if the pain and if the pain is really coming from the tarlosis cyst, uh, which is non-mechanical, then physios must be immediately uh, referring the patients to the surgeons so that they will look after the patient perhaps by a uh, surgical intervention. I hope you learned something new today. We will keep posting the other non-mechanical sources of back pain in the future videos. Okay. Thank you.